when I write music, I'm trying to put the musicians in a place that will enable their creativity. Ultimately, a composition, like the thing you just saw in Naked Lunch, you may know, you may not know, what the vibraphone player, Sai Hashimoto, was doing was completely written every note. But what the bass and the drums were doing was in a way completely improvised. They're responding to what's on the page. They're following what's on the page the way a big band drummer, if you want to talk jazz vernacular, would illustrate a big band chart. It's an art playing with a big band. You don't just do whatever you want. You got to follow the chart. So they're following a super complicated big band chart. Hitting, swinging, breaking things up, going against the grain. And what that is basically is all my compositions are platforms to enable creativity. There's the bottom line. Yeah. You know, you alluded to something just now, and it has to do with a flexibility of language. And you've, one of the many things you've done is, at times, removed improvisation from an idiomatic framework, you know, and you've said, okay, well, you are a classically trained musician. Well, here is a new framework within which you can be completely spontaneous. And it has nothing to do with jazz language. It has, it only has to do with this language. And that's one of the things you've done. And I wonder whether that was something you arrived at through trial and error, or was it something that you set out to do from the beginning to decouple, you know, improvisation from this kind of established language. Well, you want to, you know, for me, the great artists, and they include, you know, everybody from Blake and Van Gogh to Rambo and Burroughs to Coltrane and Ligeti and Charles Ives to on, I'll be here all night. They're all very, they're my heroes. They're my, they're, tra tradition is thought of, for the most part, especially in the academy, as dogma, as some kind of a set of rules, you know, that, that are haunting us. But for me, tradition is, is really a community of living spirits that are with you all the time. I describe my apartment when people say, oh, you know, where you live. I don't live in an apartment. I live in a device for enabling creativity. That's where I live. And if you come, ever come to my house, and you never will, you, it's just completely wall-to-wall -wall books, records, videos, DVDs, and then on top of those are, is art. Everywhere. Everywhere. Joseph Cornell, Belmer, Blakelock, Unica Zern, Claude Cahoon, on and on and on. And it's just, I'm surrounded by these spirits. I'm surrounded by these inspirations. And they keep me straight. They keep me going. They kick my ass. And that's, to me, what tradition is. It's something that's alive, not something that's dead. It's not something from the past. It's something from the, that's of the present, of the present. The way you're talking reminds me of something I wanted to ask, which was, which has to do with this, you know, people often talk about artists who are, you know, inspired by other disciplines, you know, it's interdisciplinary is a word, right? And one, one of the very first things of yours that I ever heard was the big gun down, which hails that whole idea. But it strikes me that you're, the way you're talking, interdisciplinary is not really the right way to think about it. It's almost as if the visual art is the music, is the literature, in this kind of metonymy or something. It's um, like tradition, transgression, transcendence. You know, I'm engaging with my heroes in each and every work that I do. Naked Lunch was inspired in many ways by Burroughs. You know, I have a record called Interzone with the old Electric Masada band that's also, you know, that explores that world. Almost every work that I do has extra musical qualities that relate to art, literature. And we were talking before about, like, breaking down the, the codified language of any music, 
classical jazz, rock, whatever you want to say, you know, why am I doing this? How is this? How did this come about? How, what is going on here? I was talking with Jorge Roder on the plane, just coming from New York today, and we were talking about how I deal with harmony. And uh, it, 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 there's the functional harmony, which you know very well, because you wrote that book about playing changes, is functional <laughs> harmony. And then there's non-functional harmony that doesn't really make sense in, in, in that analysis. But I think what I'm doing is proto-harmony. I'm really, it's, I've always been a maximalist. I include, I don't, I don't try something and then throw it away and then try something else. My, my creative life has been one where I, can, I do cobra. I still do cobra pieces. Now, oh, I used to write game pieces. I don't do that anymore. That's not part of my life. I'm not like, okay, you do your blue period, then you do your Russian period, then you do, you know, it's, that's not how my life is. Everything's all at once. It's all going on at once. And people try to make sense out of it by saying, by giving it a linear trajectory. But, that, but that's a mistake. That's an old way of thinking about creativity. You approach new creativity, you need new tools. You can't fight today's battle with yesterday's equipment. You need to come up to speed. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with creativity. You can't look at this new work and then try to analyze it with the old tools. You need new tools, which means we need creative musical analysts. We need creative musical thinkers out in the world. We need creative musical critical theorists, you know, to develop a new language to understand what it is and how to dissect and understand how these things are put together. And you can't really do it with the old tools. So my system has always been very natural, and it's based on the people that I work with. My interest in writing and engaging musicians in a musical format 